whereas the war on terror is undeclared and thus illegal. Clark is in essence advocating a life sentence for people who have not committed a crime but merely engaged in speech, often reprehensible yet constitutionally protected. The government considers radical and in opposition to its foreign policy. The Edward Snowden leaks reveal that the war on terror at home continues to grind on, capturing in its dragnet millions of Americans and foreigners, many of them innocent of any crime. The war on terror has become institutionalized, and the domestic costs of this war continue to mount. Privacy is being eroded, communications are being monitored, and dissent is being cracked down on. And there's no end in sight to this domestic juggernaut, writes Alex Kane. Clark's remarks reveal the mindset of the upper echelon of government. Mass internment of official enemies on par with Nazi Germany and Stalin's Soviet Union is now on the table. Do we really have to remind the ignoramus stuffed shirts over at the military industrial complex of the First Amendment? The First Amendment to the United States Constitution where it prohibits abridging the freedom of speech and infringing on the freedom of the press. Is this where we are headed when it comes to free speech? Hillary Clinton recently compared the Republican Party to terrorists. You have to ask yourself, if Hillary's campaign had been a shining success rather than a dismal criminal failure, would the Republican Party have been rounded up and sent to Gitmo? And is our Shanghai government only a clock tick away from declaring war on its own people? Or is this just an indication? Next segment, I'm opening the phones up. Race War 2015. It's already going. Every couple days, somebody goes up and shoots a cop because he's a cop, shoots a cop because he's white, or shoots a reporter because she's white, shoots a cameraman because he's white. And then I sit there and I watch MSNBC, CNN, you name it, even when there's manifestos, take two, three days to admit it was racially motivated. And then there's the white side of this, what we saw in Charleston, nine innocent black people killed. It's just disgusting. Nobody gets ahead because a white sheriff's deputy gets shot in the back or a camera woman or a cameraman gets killed or an anchor gets killed or a reporter gets killed or nine black people, including a state senator, get killed. And we're all here just... Dance into the tune of a bunch of social engineers that want to destabilize this country and bring it into controlled chaos. So out of that chaos, the Hegelian dialectic of problem, reaction, solution can be used to fully federalize police, to fully take over all the institutions. And our institutions certainly are far from perfect, but there was a Bill of Rights, a Constitution, a due process built into it. And a lot of good people do work for the government and do work as peace officers. And there are good people in the courts as well. There are a lot of bad people. But when you put this type of pressure on the system, the feds are always there then, themselves captured by offshore interest, to come in with a solution that is more political correctness. And if they can say, don't use the word boy or girl, or he or she, at colleges and public schools, primary schools, if they can change the name of Mount McKinley, the tallest mountain in the U.S., and give it a politically correct name, that's what Obama just did today, they can do anything. And that's what all this is about. And under political correctness, it can be like a new holocaust where... They won't just shoot cops or they won't just go after military veterans. They'll just take your guns. They'll just take your Social Security. They'll just claim in a witch hunt you said something racist. That's what they already do in Western Europe. They're already saying in Western Europe and like Sweden that you've got to house illegals in your house. The French foreign minister has slammed Eastern Europe for not accepting refugees says it's scandalous that Russia and Eastern Europe won't accept millions of refugees, but Europe is under its, quote, quota. I'm quoting here. Which intensifies the exodus out of North Africa and the Middle East, where 
I was reading in the New York Times on Friday on the show where one German town of a thousand Germans, totally picturesque, uh, an incredible uh, tourist attraction, an ancient German town has a couple thousand illegals in it that are being made legal and the Germans are being told you're going to pay for everything. I mean, imagine 2,000 North Africans in your town. Oh, and we're going to give them driver's license. We're going to let them vote. Same thing here in the United States. It's just crazy. We're being militarily conquered in a culture war by the scientific technocracy that masquerades as the left. But again, they're not environmentalist wackos. They're not idiots. They're not failures. They are conquerors. They are cold-blooded sociologists, anthropologists, psychologists, psychiatrists, social engineers, pitchmen, advertisement experts that overnight have got us removing Woodrow Wilson's statue from UT today. And that sets the precedent, folks, to rename mountains and then tell you what words you can use and tell you... This is a cult, and they're on TV saying, your kids belong to us. I can play that clip up saying fluoride's good for your brain. You know, that's the larger issue here is the people running this are cold-blooded, and they've just got us all fighting over gender and race and all these distractionary issues while all of our freedoms, our Bill of Rights, our right to privacy, our health rights, forced inoculations are starting all over the world while government gets us to fight with each other, while multinational, above-the-law banks prepare us for the world financial collapse, which they, in their own words, admit will bring in the one-world government. Again, they create the race war, they offer the solution. Total political correctness, total federalization. They go and fund ISIS and all these other groups, turn them loose, and they have a pretext to spend hundreds of billions more fighting all of that. They create the trillions of derivatives, sign us on to them, and then tell us how we're in debt to them. And it's because of the incredible political, socioeconomic, and geopolitical illiteracy that's going on. I want to take your phone calls in the next segment. 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539, 877-789-2539. But it is beyond legendary what's happening, and they're just getting started. This is the world government. This is the culture war. This is the takeover. Everything previous to this was just the beginning, was just the preparatory phase. We are going into the phase of exploitation. That's communist terms when they prep a nation, take it over, then exploit it. We're now in the, the exploitation phase because they believe when we put up with Obamacare and we put up with all these other scams that we'll put up with anything. And so they're going to tell us how to talk, what words to use. They're going to tell us our kids belong to them. They're going to tell us that what drugs we're going to take, what shots we're going to take. And they're going to tell us we're going to pay for illegals. And they're going to tell us that, hey, when a black person beats you over the head with a lead pipe and your brain's falling on the ground, that's an act of love because you're a dirty white person. And it's going to be some weird white person saying it on MTV with a bunch of crazed cultural Marxists trained at these big universities, run by offshore mega banks. This is the takeover. And just like they've, they've said, they're going to fully intimidate and federalize local jurisdictions with cop killing sprees and the rest of it. They're going to then purge the police departments, put in their operatives, give them armored vehicles, the rest of it, and then flip it once they're all militarized and angry and put it on the American people. Of every race, color, and creed, if you stand up for lower taxes, family values, medical freedom, basic sovereignty, if you don't want to pay for hundreds of millions of foreigners coming here and getting everything for free, you're the enemy. And they don't care. They'll bring in any amount of foreigners they have to and then just stick them on the government trough, get them on the dole. It's the same program that's been used in Europe. And if you don't like it, they'll just intimidate you and say, shut up, racist. Wrong hood. And how do you argue with somebody on welfare who's arrogant and stupid, whether they be black or white, it doesn't matter, just shooting their mouth off at you?
But at the base of it, even though the globalist technocracy is very scientific, they are communists at the grassroots level and in the governmental level. And even though they're being directed by technocrats, the culture, the religion is communism. And so there is, if you study the 60s and 70s, at its base, there is a cop-killing religion and a hatred of men, period, and just a will to kill. I mean, have you ever been around a real communist? You're having drinks with them? Because I've done this. And they'll, they'll start telling you, listen, you better join us. We take over, we're killing everybody. And you realize you're dealing with a hardcore psychopath having fantasies about death camps and re-education camps, which they've gotten all the new army manuals. I mean, it's bad. And the only thing standing in their way is they know is going to be local government, county, city government, state governments with patriots, military veterans joining with them and saying no to the feds that have been taken over. And so when they do that, they're going to call your town or city racist when it doesn't go along with the agenda. And that's how they're going to sell the new civil war where the globalists, the U.N. forces come in to exterminate and take out all the racists that didn't accept the new U.N. utopia with the Pope here calling for world government and carbon taxes. So the social engineers know that we're emotional. They know we're tribal. We're based that way in our human development on this planet. And they're playing us like a fiddle. And they cold-bloodedly want to get everybody basically killing each other. They basically cold-bloodedly want us to not see other humans as people for who they are individually, but only of what group they're in. The opposite of what Martin Luther King talked about. This is true identity politics, true race-based culture. And then... They come in and say anything hurtful to anyone must be removed. But then they selectively decide what will be removed. That's why public schools across the country are simply saying no flags are allowed. Because the Confederate was upsetting. Now it's the American. Now it's the Mexican. Now there can be no symbols. And that's the essence of what George Arwell who was a propagandist for the OSS and was a socialist until he found out what they were planning, wrote in 1984. He wrote essays before he died, one year after the book was published in 1948 of tuberculosis. He wrote essays saying, this is what I really believe is going to happen. This is what our elites are going to set up. And Aldous Huxley gave a speech in 62 and wrote Brave New World Revisited and said, no, I'm part of the power elite. We're going to have a high-tech pharmacia where we drug you and dumb you down and end sexual activity and make you asexual and then basically phase humans out entirely and go to machines. His brother, of course, ran UNESCO, which actually runs the UN. He was the director general of UNESCO, Julian Huxley. And the reason I go back to that is he rebuked Orwell and said it's not going to be a police state. He said a police state will bring us to power, but when we're done, we're going to end fathers and mothers. We're going to end language, as you said, but beyond what you can imagine, as Bertrand Russell said, to the point of rebelling against the establishment would be like sheep rebelling against the practice of eating sheep. They don't even know they're being butchered. They're so dumbed down. And this is a great victory against language, a great victory against the Renaissance. It is a new dark age on PCP. That language itself is now bad. And so you just follow whatever the new approved propaganda is or you'll be rebuked. So you just sit there saying whatever the latest slogan is so you'll be safe. That's directly out of the lunchrooms of 1984. And we now are in it. I was sitting in a trendy part of downtown Austin today having brunch hours before my grandmother's 90th birthday. And I was listening to the conversations of the trendies around me. And they were all telling each other how trendy they were and how politically correct they were and how they had all adopted the new language and, 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 and laughing at Donald Trump and all the rest of it. And I realized I'm living in a giant brain.